What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro video for you. And this one, we're going to find out if adding more RAM to your computer makes Vegas run and render faster. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. Alright, so for this test, I'm going to be testing doubling the RAM in my computer from 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM to 64 gigabytes. I'm also going to be doing four individual renders for each amount of RAM. So for 32 gigs, I have four renders I'm going to do, and for 64 gigs, I have four more I'm going to do. Currently, I'm recording my screen using OBS, and that's passing through an Elgato HD60 capture card. So I'm using the least amount of extra resources I can to make sure these tests are pure. Now what I'm going to be rendering is a 4K video, which is one minute long, and it is in 10-bit color, and I'm going to render it with and without effects. GPU accelerated encoding will be on, the SO4 compound reader will be enabled, and my dynamic RAM is going to vary from 0 to 30,000. I'm also going to be rendering all these videos using Vocoder's renderer. If you don't know what that is, it's an amazing renderer that really does speed up render times and just make rendering more reliable, sharper, and better quality. I have a video on it that I can link up in the card to the top right and in the description below. I'll of course speed up these so you're not waiting all this time just watching a screen render, which is entirely too boring, so I'll just be voicing over the results. Over on the left hand side I have my task manager open which shows all of my usages and percentages on a graph. My CPU usage is at about 7% while recording. The RAM idles at about a 23% usage, and the GPU encoding is totally zero, so that's good. So for all the percentages of the results, we're going to subtract what the operating system normally does, and that's going to be our total percentage used. So for the first video, it's a minute long clip with no effects on it, and we're going to be using the dynamic RAM preview set to 30,000. It looks like the CPU peaks at about 63% and declines from there. The RAM, however, goes all the way up to 100%, and the GPU is about 6% usage. Now, here's a huge negative. If the RAM is maxing out at 100%, that render is going way slower than it should be because it's now choking the computer. So that's a downfall of setting your dynamic RAM preview too high. For the final number, this render took 2 minutes and 51 seconds to complete. For the second one, we're going to be doing a minute of footage with no effects on, but we're going to change the dynamic RAM preview to zero. Right off the bat, we can see it's already going much faster. It looks like the CPU usage is roughly about 55% utilized. The RAM is up to about 23%, it's nowhere near the 100 like it was before. And the GPU usage is at about 21%. Total time to render this one was a minute and 13 seconds. Next, we're going to be adding a real smart motion blur onto this clip, which is a GPU intensive thick effect that really does amplify rendering time. Also for test number three, we're going to put the dynamic RAM preview back to 30,000. And as we get started, you can see it's taking some sweet time. The CPU averages anywhere from 19 to 27. It spikes up and down. The RAM usage, of course, goes right back to 100% because we are maxing out and choking our RAM. The GPU averages at about 2% utilization. Total time to render this one is 9 minutes and 44 seconds. For this fourth test, we are going to keep Real Smart Motion Blur on there, but we are going to change our dynamic RAM preview max down to zero. As we start, we can see it's going a lot better. The CPU averages about 27% usage. The RAM only tops out and averages at about 23% usage. The GPU stays at a pretty steady 6% usage. The total time to render this one is 4 minutes and 10 seconds. And again, here are the results of all the renders for 32 gigabytes of RAM and all the details of each render. Now I went ahead and doubled my RAM. I put another 32 gig stick in my computer and I'm now at 64 gigabytes of RAM. So for the fifth test, we're going to do no effects and the dynamic RAM preview we're going to keep at 30,000. As we get started, the CPU usage jumped up to about 80%. The RAM usage jumps up to about 76%, but does not go to 100% because I have plenty of RAM and my system is not being choked anymore. My GPU usage goes up to 45%. And then there it is. Total time to render this clip is 35 seconds. For the next test, we still don't have any effects on here, and I'm changing my dynamic RAM preview down to zero. 
CPU usage goes up to about 65%. RAM usage doesn't go up to 76, it goes up to 28% on average while rendering this one. And GPU usage fluctuates anywhere from 35 to 60%, which pretty much averages to about 45%. Total time to render was 42 seconds. For the seventh test, we are adding Real Smart Motion Blur back on here, changing the dynamic RAM preview back to 30,000, and starting it. We can see it's a little slow, but of course that's because of Real Smart Motion Blur. The CPU usage averages at about 24%, the RAM usage goes up to about 74%, and the GPU usage goes to about 8%, which is interesting. Total time to render is 3 minutes and 4 seconds. For the 8th and final test, we are keeping Real Smart Motion Blur on here and changing the Dynamic RAM Preview Max to 0. As we get started, it looks like it's going about the same pace. CPU usage goes to about 24% on average. RAM usage, however, doesn't go up to 74%. It stays around 28% on average. GPU usage stays at about 8% on average as well, which again is interesting. Total time to render was 2 minutes and 51 seconds. Here are all the results for the 64GB of RAM all side by side with the details of each render. Now what we've learned in all this, first thing is, if your RAM is being maxed out while rendering, then adding RAM would absolutely increase performance. Having more RAM just allows your computer processor and your graphics card to breathe. This in turn makes everything run faster. Doubling my RAM from 32 to 64 gigabytes increased my render speeds anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. Second thing is, changing your dynamic RAM preview utilizes more RAM while rendering. Making it too high can max out your RAM and choke out your system and slow your render down. But it also seems to reduce the CPU usage a little bit as well. But ultimately, it doesn't seem to reliably increase render times. It does, however, increase Vegas's stability and reduces the amount of crashes Vegas has. So I always recommend setting the dynamic RAM preview to one third of your total RAM. Third thing, if you have too many effects in your video, your RAM usage and your GPU usage will prioritize themselves to help generate your effect while rendering instead of being used to encode your video. So the more effects you add, the less RAM and less GPU are going to be used to make your render. So your render is definitely going to be slower. And there you have it. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.